it's Safar and I'm back with another video. Today we're taking a look at the drawings I did for week two of this challenge. And if you still haven't seen the video where I talk about what this is all about, go click the card, I'll put a link there. Did you watch it? Okay, okay, great. So a bunch of you guys have been commenting and leaving your opinions on this challenge and discussing it in general and I think that's really great. I really appreciate it. Even though I, I don't reply to everyone, I read every single comment and I'm so glad that you want to discuss this. In the initial video I said that I was gonna do something really dumb and that's because to me in my head it sounded really dumb to just draw the same thing for 30 days. But a bunch of you guys have been saying that this could be really useful if you want to improve on a certain thing or improve your style. And I do agree with you guys, this could be a really useful challenge, depending on how you choose to do it. The way that I've chosen to do it is more of an experiment that links my everyday life with my artist life. And I don't focus as much on improving as an artist or improving this one drawing. And I'm just saying this so you know why I'm not trying to make every drawing better than the last one I made. Because to me that's not what this experiment is about. But you can do it however you want to. But now let's take a look at the drawings that I made this week. For day eight, I started with my blue color race pencil and then I thought, what if I go in with my red color race pencil and make it look really cool? Like one of those weird 3D things where you have to wear the blue and red glasses and it doesn't really work, but it looks really cool. That was kind of the feeling I was going for with this. And obviously it doesn't look like a 3D thing, but I love how the red and the blue work together. It, it looks really awesome. And I would say that this is definitely one of my favorites from this challenge so far. The effect of the blue and the red color race pencils look really cool, but it also has kind of decent anatomy and the pose is good and everything looks all right. So yay. For day nine, I just really wanted to jump in there with my brush pens and not do any sketch first, so I did. This is definitely one of those just draw something and don't erase and don't really think too much about the posing and the anatomy and if everything's right and in the right place. This was more of just a make something day. And I was focusing more on making the overall look and feel of the drawing right instead of the small parts. And that's totally fine to have some days that are like that because the idea of this experiment isn't to improve every day. It's to see what happens if you try to draw the same thing every day. And we artists are people, so we're gonna have good days and bad days. We're gonna have days where we have to do other things. So. Naturally, there will be days where the art isn't as good as others. For day 10, I just didn't know what to do. So I grabbed my blue color race pencil and I just started sketching her out. And I think that the pose and everything for this one, the details and that kind of thing, turn out pretty good. It's kind of a boring piece because it only has the blue tones and nothing's too saturated and there isn't a lot of contrast but i think that i kind of cleaned this up and i made sure that her facial details and that kind of thing were in the right place so i think this one's pretty okay but it's not the most interesting one so on day 11 we had a lecture on ergonomics and we talked about a lot of things to do to not hurt yourself when drawing. And one of the things was to try holding the pencil differently so you don't hurt your muscles in your hands. And I like to hold my pencil like this, like uh, what I'm doing for this drawing sometimes, because you can get some really lively drawings when you try to hold your pencil a different way. So for this day, I really wanted to, to try this and see if I could get something really cool out of it. And even though the anatomy and proportions and all of that stuff isn't the greatest for this one, because, you know, I was holding the pencil weirdly and it's kind of hard to draw that way. 
But aside from that, I think this one turned out really great because it has a very nice energy and I like the kind of crumbly, sketchy lines of this drawing. They give it just something, some oomph to it that's really nice. On day 12, I was still kind of thinking about the whole ergonomic thing and my right hand was kind of hurting at the time I decided to sit down and do this. So I wanted to try and use my left hand to do the drawing for this day. And that ended up with me using the entire evening to just sit and draw with my left hand because I found it so fun. I'm right-handed, but sometimes I start thinking about what will happen if I injure my right hand and can use it for drawing. What will I do then? And that got me thinking maybe I should try training my left hand to be also be a drawing hand. So this whole thing resulted in me wanting to train my left hand so I can be more ambidextrous. So for the remaining time of that day, I used my left hand to do everything that I would normally use my right hand to do. And it's really a fun exercise to do. I really do recommend people to try drawing with their left hand. It's really useful and it's very fun. It's actually not that hard to do. For day 13, I started thinking maybe I should try venturing out into other mediums that I'm not that used to. So I decided that I would try watercoloring. Now, spoiler alert, but this paper was not meant for watercolors. So this ended up turning out really bad. The sketch and the ink looked really nice, but once I started putting on watercolors, it just uh, it went downhill from there. And I think it's a combination of me not really knowing how to use watercolor and the paper not being a watercolor paper at all. But as I said before, this experiment is not about creating a better drawing every day. It's about seeing what happens and it's also about just accepting that sometimes you make something bad, but it's okay. It's okay to make bad. I'm gonna quote Chuck Jones here, who once said that every artist has a thousand bad drawings in them, and the only way to get rid of them is to draw them. And I think this is a very good way to look at it. So hey, don't feel bad when you make something bad. It's okay, it's totally fine, everyone does once in a while. And hey, here's my artist hands. Does anyone else get this just really messy hands when they paint, because I sure do. On day number 14, I was really tired and I finally dragged myself out of bed to do this, but I just, uh, I didn't want to do something really cool and awesome. So I just grabbed some cheap markers, water-based markers, I grabbed the yellow one and I just sketched it out and then I drew on top with a black mark. And I really like the way that the yellow and the black looks together, the effect that it gives. I just don't really like the drawing that I made. Ah, so I've stopped being so negative, Jesus. Yeah, but this was one of those uh, no erase kind of things again. And I think those are good because you have no way of fixing your mistakes if you make a mistake. And I feel like that's a very good thing to try and to learn as an artist. That sometimes you just can't fix your mistakes. And you really want to, but you just can't. And you can spend so much time going over drawing again and again and again because you want to fix every little thing that's wrong with it. So I like to just draw in a medium that can't be erased or just not have an eraser and just draw. And that's honestly what I did for most of this challenge. I can remember maybe four days where I actually used an eraser. And even sometimes if, if I'm just using a pencil, I won't erase because I just don't want to. But that's kind of the good thing about this challenge because you can just try again tomorrow and see if you can make it better. Okay, day 15. To be honest with you, I was kind of getting tired of just drawing with the same tools every day because I usually do it on the train and I have a limited amount of tools with me. So by day 15, I really wanted to just try something really wicked and weird. 
So, I busted out all of my makeup. Woo! And yes, my makeup do look messy. And yes, it is very bad makeup, but I don't wear makeup, so I know nothing about makeup. I just have this makeup because it was given to me as, as gifts or whatever. And I use it sometimes when I do Halloween makeup or, or costume makeup or something, which isn't very often. And I do not know how to use makeup. So please, uh, please don't yell at me for, for wrecking everything. But I mean, there, I guess there's no right way to use makeup for making art. You shouldn't, you shouldn't use makeup for art. It's not a very good medium. Unless you're making art on faces, then it's probably the best medium. And once again, because I didn't make a sketch, her proportions ended up being weird. It's mostly just her neck that's really long and really thick <laughs> for some reason. Um, but again, that's what happens and it's fine. I feel like the theme for this week's video is, hey, you mess up sometimes, but it's fine. <laughs> I figured out that when using the eyeshadow, a brush is really not the most optimal thing to use. Unless you want it to be really faint, then it's very good. But if you want a lot of pigment, you will have to use those uh, sponge applicator whatever things because they really do pick up a lot of pigment and they lay it down way better than the brush does. I also mm, smeared her eyebrows at some point. I used eyeliner to outline her and the eyeliner on her eyebrows was not dry and I went over it with a brush and now there's just black lines everywhere in her face. So that's kind of sad, but I mean, yeah, it's okay. I have it on, on video, so I can always go back to before I smeared it and say, ah, yeah, this is how it looked before I smeared everything. <laughs> Great. And more artist hands, because I'm real messy. <laughs> and that's it for the drawings I made this week. I hope that you're enjoying this. It seems like a bunch of you are, and that's really awesome. And I've seen a lot of you guys saying that you want to do this. And if you do, please share it with me. I really want to see it. You can tweet it at me. My Twitter is in the description below, or you can message me here on YouTube with a link, <laughs> or you can even message me on Tumblr or DeviantArt. But that's about it for this video. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you later.